That's a tough one. <laughs> one has to be so good at oneself and confidence in oneself. Once I fix my direction that I have to go in this direction, nothing should sway me away from such a such a direction. See. But peer pressure, so many people saying, oh, I've been, and because of my friend, I did this. You can't blame your friend for it, see. It's, if there are too many people pressurizing you, you can always inform your teachers or your parents that I have been pressurized like this. Or tell parents of the people children who are pressurizing you. This peer pressure is not only within the students' community. This peer pressure is also there amongst the elders. Very indirect one. One teacher gets an iPhone. She becomes the talk of the whole school. She got an iPhone. <laughs> Saris. All these fashion things, the island, isn't it also a peer pressure? Indirect. You like to get pressurized and then you pressure your provider, husband or wife and so. So it requires a real understanding, right thinking and right understanding. Correct thinking and right understanding is required to sail through this maze of life and both all this this is possible only when we are centered within ourselves through meditation when we arrive at very clean understandings sharp understanding of what I should be doing no sadhana chatustaya is one of the finest offering of our culture to the world sadhana chatustaya the very first step is Viveka. Viveka means I should arrive at a state where the differentiation between right and wrong is made easy. I should be able to know what is right, what is wrong, what is profitable, what is not so profitable, what is good for my self for my nation what is not good for myself and for my nation and if you as we advance more and more then we should be able to differentiate between what is the cause and what is the effect the things that i'm going through now is it because of my past karmas or am i creating new karmas Am I undergoing the effect or I'm causing something new? And when I understand this, then one can seize, one can desist from creating new karmas. Right? That is also the product of contemplative heartfulness way of practices. It's a product. You arrive at such a level of intelligence, wisdom, to decide for yourself what to do, what not to do, what to have, what not to have. But to do all this, one has to have courage and a goal in life. If you don't have courage, even if God advises you, you will not follow it. How many followed Lord Krishna during his lifetime? Hardly anyone. Not even Arjun. He had to be coaxed. He had to be elevated at a consciousness level by preaching. And ultimately, Lord Krishna's final weapon was Vishwarupa Darshan. And that too, he could not digest it. Arjun said, please come back to the or your, my friendlier form. I can't see this divine form. I'm afraid. He was not ready, not prepared for it. But then seeing all that, 
he asked Lord Krishna, I have been so gifted, you are my friend, I will do what you say. But one last question. How will the future generation know you? There too there is a dialogue. Lord Krishna talks about the importance of the heart. And he says, I dwell in every heart of every living being. Look myself in your heart. And where are we looking? All wrong places. Seeing his real form, no one could understand him. How would you understand him by having his knuckly forms? Think over it, please. 